well, these magical dreams are very old, you know. I mean, I do think we want to, we want to uh, walk the golden streets of the imagination. Either we want it as heaven, or we want it as a Buddhist visualization of some mandalic realm, or we want to return to the high days of Atlantis, or we, and virtual reality can deliver. You know, it can actually release you into literary narrative as though it were real. And, you know, I think very quickly we may, the, the real struggle, in Greg Egan's fiction, he makes clear that, and I agree with him, that the real struggle that we will face in the future is the struggle to remain uh, sensible to each other that there is going to be a tendency for us, like the head of a dandelion, to just explode in a million directions. All, everyone their own private Idaho, everyone uh, completely able to project their own fears, hopes, dreams, phobias, obsessions, with such crystalline, hard-edged perfection and persuasive realism that the real struggle will be to remain coherent for the word human to include us all and not exclude anyone. We don't want to divide into those who till the earth, those who went in machine bodies to the stars, and those who downloaded themselves into nanoviruses and disappeared over the edge of the event horizon into the black hole at the center of the galaxy. I mean, Maybe we want these things. I like the idea of the human family, whatever its individual expressions and adumbrations, staying with a coherent image. I mean, of course we're all different, but our commonality is in the bedrock of this planet. Uh, something not lightly to be given up, I would think. Maybe unity is not the, the way to go. Well, this, this, I don't have an answer here. This was the issue that hovered over Diaspora, the Greg Egan's novel that's set the most far in the future, because at least three forms of human beings had come into existence so diametrically different from each other that they operated basically in complete isolation from each other. I mean, some people became cyborgs, human machine unions that were essentially immortal and that could cruise the stars and have you know cosmic adventures and then but what most people did was they became entirely digital they had no interface to hardware they simply became streams of electrons living out endlessly adumbrated fantasies in the s synthetic realities and then, the, then there was the predictable third group, the earth-centered purists who tilled the soil and had dirt under their fingernails and actually had sex to procreate rather than dial up things out of vats and stuff like that. Uh, and I'm sure, but uh, yeah, I mean, people will choose whatever they want, and of course. People will migrate between one group and another. The one thing that all this makes me feel good about is I think it, it, uh, it's an expansion of choice. And then, you know, presuming there's some kind of overarching dynamic, whether Darwinian or something else, it will all titrate out in whatever direction it wants to go. Uh, one fantasy I've had is that what man could do for the earth is make everything conscious. You know that Grateful Dead song, You Are the Eyes of the World? You know, let every eye lead to a conscious mind. Let the squirrel think, and the squid think, and the bumblebee think. Uh, because for sure, you know, we will artificially create robot simulacrums for ourselves to pass among uh, into the natural world as uh, inhabitants of animal bodies. But why not just bring all animal mind to the threshold of sentience? Could that be done? Well, we don't know, because we don't know upon what 
foundation sentience rests, whether it requires a certain number of cc's of brain mass, or whether that's a completely preposterous and absurd notion, and that conceivably a paramecium, or a housefly, or a hummingbird could have a kind of shared intelligence. I mean, everything has its own intelligence anyway that's the expression of its nature. But imagine a com planet-wide community of seamless intelligence where, you know, you could log on to the mind of a coral reef as easily as you could log on to the internet.